Are you a new trader who knows nothing at all about what volume means? Or are you an experienced trader who just wants more information? Watch this entire video and you'll learn a lot. Hey guys, I have another trades here with another video lesson and today I'm going to talk about volume um, and exactly why it's beneficial to know what volume is, what it means and how it affects trading. So essentially what volume is, is the number of shares or contracts traded in a stock during a given period of time. So say here on this five minute candle the volume bars down here you can see it's labeled volume it shows you how much volume how many shares were traded in that five minute time frame and it always changes depending on what time frame you're using see we can go to the daily chart and now it shows us the volume of the entire day um so essentially volume means that um it's, it's just the amount of shares traded between a buyer and a seller because remember for every buyer there has to be a seller and for every seller that has to be a buyer so they're exchanging the same amount of shares so that counts as one transaction so for the entire day volume is basically the sum of all the entire transactions that happen in that specific day or that specific time frame and volume is important in technical analysis because it's used to measure the relative worth of a market move. If the markets make a strong price movement, then the strength of that movement largely depends on the volume during that specific period. So essentially, the higher the volume during the price move, the more significant the move. Let me repeat that one more time just to make it very clear. The higher the volume during the price move, the more significant the move is. So volume trends basically uh, confirm strength. Volume is one of the most important measures of strength for us traders because um, you know we're using technical analysis and technical analysis is really based on human psychology and groupthink. Like I've said in previous video lessons, um, the reason why technical analysis works is because all of the traders are using the same exact patterns and strategies to buy and sell at the same time. So if there's a high volume of traders following the same patterns as you and I, there's a much higher chance that that stock will move in the way that we want it to. Whereas if we're trading something that's super low volume, let me just modify my scanner here and pick up stuff that you know is super illiquid. Uh, edit this. Oh, by the way, this is a equity feed. Um, if you wanna try out this scanner, uh, if you click the link down below, there's a free two week trial no credit card needed it i highly recommend it um the past week or so it's found every single day a stock that went up at least a hundred percent and yesterday it found alrt which went up twelve thousand percent just yesterday so highly recommend you check this out it's you can use it completely free for two weeks if you don't like it it's not going to charge you at the end because you don't need to give it your credit card so let's just look at some e-liquid stocks, stocks that have very low volume and see the difference between those stocks and stocks that have high volume. So PQEFF, you can see this chart is a disaster, super choppy, super zigzaggy, the, the technical overlays and you know moving averages and stuff that we use, they're just zigzagging all over the place. You know, you don't know what's going on with the stock. You don't know which way it's going to go. There's no defined pattern here, you know? Let's just go through some more. Z E N O, I see that one right there. Once again, super, super choppy. There's no real defined pattern. You know, it could be good for swing trading, but you know, who wants to do that? We're in here to make money in and out very fast. OMTK, another example, very, very illiquid. You can see, even this is a daily volume, and just look how choppy it is. It just jumps around. Imagine the one minute chart, you know there is no chart see you see what I mean we have to focus on stocks that have the highest dollar volume let's just pick out one more okay IMMD 
only had $12,000 worth of volume this entire day. You could see, super, super choppy, super, super illiquid. You do not want to focus on stocks that have low volume. You want to focus on stocks that have a high volume. And more specifically, if, if you're going to be trading OTCs like me and my students are, you want to look at stocks with a high dollar volume. And that's why I really recommend Equity Feed because it's one of the only scanners I have found that shows dollar volume on these OTC penny stocks. So let's you know reverse and look at the stock that has the highest amount of dollar volume, ALRT. It had $3 million worth of volume traded today. 30 million shares traded today. So let's look at that. And now you can see this one minute chart. Okay, maybe the one minute kind of sucks over here because it was dying, but <laughs> uh, let's look at the five minute. How about that? That was a really bad example. Gosh. Okay, no, look. Look, the five minute. You can see a clear trend. You can see clear patterns. You can see the, the candlesticks are connected. You can see the moving averages, the Bollinger Bands, and your stochastics are not zigzagging around everywhere, you know. There's a defined pattern here. And that's because there's a lot of traders who are making those defined patterns up here. You know, um, you have to think of technical analysis as a self-fulfilling prophecy. It only works because traders think it works. You know, um, if everyone sees a breakout, they're going to buy at that breakout. And everyone buying at that breakout is going to make it go up and raise in value, meaning the breakout worked. If we approach a breakout and there's no volume behind it, it's not going to break out. There's not enough buyers to push it over that level and it's not going to break out. There's going to be more sellers than buyers because you have to understand that at any support and resistance level, there's both buyers and sellers. They're doing two different methods. Say you dip by a stock, okay? Say you dip by it right here and your profit target is the high of day at like 1363. You're going to buy down here, and right when it hits this point, you're going to start selling. You're going to just want to get out, you know? And the same thing with shorters, you know? There are not shorters in OTCs, but in NASDAQs and other stocks, shorts come up at resistance levels, and they short. You know, they sell shares. So if there's more sellers than buyers at a resistance point, it's going to hold up as resistance. Whereas if there's more buyers than sellers at a specific resistance point, it's going to, you know, overcome those sellers and break through. And the way you can um, see the buyers and sellers is with the level two and the time of sales. I will go over an entire video describing the level two and time of sales that will be dropping on Friday. I know I've said I'll do it, but now I promise I'll, I'll really do it. Um, I'm going to make it on Friday. But essentially, when we're reaching a uh, area of support or resistance, if you want the support to hold, you want to see a bunch of buyers down here in this area. If you want the if you want the support to break, you want to see a lot of sellers in that area, more red prints than green prints. And the and the flip side is true for resistance. If you want the resistance to break, you need to see more buyers than sellers. If you want the resistance to hold, you need more sellers than buyers. And the reason why volume is so important with us momentum traders is because the more volume there is, the more volatile the stock is going to be, the more range the stock can move around. And that also helps a lot when we're looking at our specific patterns. Uh, one of my favorite patterns is the Bollinger Band squeeze. Um, I was hoping that this would have a Bollinger Band squeeze towards the upside, but essentially you can see Whenever the Bollinger Band squeezes, that means there's low volume. There's a low amount of volatility going on. And usually when you're trading these highly volatile stocks and there's a period of consolidation, that usually means that another period of volatility will come up. It doesn't tell you which way it's going to go. It just, you know, it signifies that these are going to, the bands are going to spread out because of the volatility. You can see here, the stock was very volatile in this area and it, the bands got super wide here it squeezed down got wide again so essentially what we're looking for during technical analysis is that um, 
whatever areas that we we want to buy we want to see a lot of buy orders happening at that same time so let's just look at azfl for an example um let me go to the 30 minute chart so right here you can see whenever this reached the bottom of the dip it had the highest amount of buys and here yeah it has it as a red candle but that's just because this was a crazy crazy crash but you can still see that at that level there was a lot of volume there was a lot of shares being traded if there wasn't a lot of volume then that would mean that that move is kind of insignificant and it would just you know pop right back up in price however because there was so much volume so much selling going on that meant that okay this is a really significant move there's a lot of traders trading this right now so technical analysis will come into play and you can see we had a we had a nice doji right here a lot of traders saw that doji because of the volume and that let it have a small bounce now when it started to flatten out you can see it was trying to break out of this candle but the volume was way too low it it didn't have the strength behind it to break out so it continued one leg further down and then you can see on this candle this green candle right here when it found support at 0 0.0019 it had a large influx of buyers who you know bought it up at that level and held the held the support and continued it, it up um so essentially what i'm trying to get across to you guys is that you need to pay attention to volume um let me see if i can find any good examples i i um saw this one trade on drys i think it was how long ago was it back in the beginning of august okay that was too long ago for the daily chart uh what else soup q trying to find a good example of a, a period of consolidation where there's no volume and then when it just breaks out and it has a lot of volume come on okay right here is a perfect example you can see all throughout this time frame there was no volume whatsoever and you can see the stock was trading very very choppy and illiquid it was super super illiquid there was no volume there were no traders and then suddenly boom there's a huge 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 amount of volume so that's how you know that this move is significant if this was some sort of promotional play or some pump and dump it would have you know spiked up and then crashed back down but because there was so much volume behind it that leads traders to understand that okay this is a significant move and there could be some con there could be some continuation behind this move you can see um ne next couple days the volume died down and it consolidated in this range once this range broke out you can see this one day had a higher level of volume than the last because of that breakout more buyers came in when they saw the breakout and bought it up and then next day there was a big crash a lot of sellers came in and you, and you can see a large amount of selling happening likewise down here on these days it found support at this area low amount of volume you know this day had 9.41 million shares worth of volume the next day we can see it broke out of that level had a very big spike and this day it had a volume of 24 million so you can see that volume is a very fundamental uh thing about technical analysis because it basically tells you how many traders are active in that stock right now if you don't have volume technical analysis will not work and that's why i keep preaching to you guys that you need to focus on stocks that have a high amount of dollar volume because if there's no dollar volume behind the stock, it's not going to go anywhere. So let me just recap this. If traders want to have a confirmation of a reversal on a level of support, then they look for a high amount of buying volume. On the flip side, if traders are looking to have a break of the support, a crack of the support, 
they look for a low volume of buyers and more sellers. So that deals with support. Now for resistance, if traders want to confirm a breakout, then they look for a high amount of buying volume. If they want to see that resistance hold, then they look for a large amount of selling volume. So I hope I made it clear enough. I know um, this is not the best, most planned uh, explanation of it. I'm just going purely off of my own knowledge. I didn't pre-read this, pre-write this or script this at all. I'm just speaking from you know my mind and why I think volume is so important. Um, if you guys want any more clarif if you guys want any more clarification, please let me know. I'll be happy to uh, you know clear anything up if I need to. Uh, but as far as the market goes today, it was you know it was a pretty bad day. Uh, so let's just rate it by the dollar volume, and you can see the stocks with the most dollar volume. Everything on this list is red, except for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stocks. So eight stocks out of this whole list went up on the day. And, it, and as we just scroll through, you can see a lot of stocks went red. Um, so when I see stuff like that happening, you have to understand the general market, you know, the move of the market, the, uh, the, the emotions of the market kind of. You have to understand what the overall market is doing when you're going to place a trade. Like yesterday when AL, ALRT was running 12,000%, everything else was green as well, you know. But today, everything is green, you know, everything's crashing. I'm not going to want to trade. I placed one trade today on ALRT. Um, it wasn't a successful trade. My plan was great. My um, the places where I, I was gonna buy were great, but I just could not get executed for some reason. I was buying, you know, on top of the ask. I was buying, you know, half a cent above the ask, and my order would just sit there and not do anything. So let me just go into here. Uh, I only played the market open because I even told you guys that um, yesterday in yesterday's video lesson I was saying. There will most likely be a, a panic sell because people are taking profits. You know, when the stock is up 12,000%, you know people are going to take profits. So I knew I knew that there was going to be a, a panic sell. And I was going to get into this bounce, but I did not get executed, so I waited. I saw it retest this previous resistance area right here. And then I saw it dip back down. I was going to see if it could double bottom. So I was ready to place an order at the double bottom. But we didn't get that. We made a lower low. And you can see that at these two levels, there was a high relative amount of trading. There's a relative high amount of volume. On this green candle, there was more volume than these red candles. Because there are more buyers showing up to hold up that bounce. The one thing I noticed that really glared out to me was this beautiful divergence right here. This is my number one pattern for dip buying, but it's just so hard to find in real time. Thankfully, I was able to find this one and I was ready to act on it. I was trying to get in on this bounce somewhere in this level. I tried the very bottom. I didn't get executed. I kept trying and I just wasn't getting executed. I eventually chased it. Um, I'm not sure what my exact entry point was, but I know I lost around $60, $65. Yeah, I lost $65. Um, no big deal. It was like a $1,000 a position, so less than, you know, 8%. No big deal at all. Um, you know, I was able to cut my losses, and that's fine. My plan was great. My strategies were great. Um, I shouldn't have chased because that's the reason why I lost on this trade. Um, when I wasn't getting executed at the bottom, I should have just left it alone and not uh, had the fear of missing out. But you know, this bounce was a very good bounce. From top to bottom here, this would have been 35%. No, I think that's calculating wrong because it's backwards. Let's see this. 
Oh yeah, so from top to bottom, this was a 50% bounce. Um, and a couple of my students nailed this bounce perfectly because I alerted it on my Twitter page at Ivanov Trades. Make sure you follow it because I'm doing free alerts every single day there. And then, you know, afterwards, you can see the volume just died off. There was no more volume in this market. It was being super thinly traded, uh, very, very illiquid. If we go to the five minute, I was trying to see if we could get a late day spike because we were holding higher lows here. I posted a picture of this right here of these higher lows and this Bollinger Band squeeze. And I was thinking, okay, if we could get a high influx of buying volume, this could see a, a retest of end of day because having a Bollinger Band squeeze like this along with higher lows, that's usually a good pattern. But the 60 moving average was still bearing over it. So it was pushing it down. And eventually we just lost the support, lost the trend line, had more selling happen right when that happened because people realized, okay, this isn't going to do what they expected. So they sell off their shares and you can see end of day, it just kind of tanked. Um, that's the only real stock that I even watched today. Uh, once I placed my two trades, no, my one trade, um, I just took the day off because I realized that this this market was super super dead everything was going red you know what are the chances of you you know picking one of these stocks any stock on the market and it happens to be one of these eight stocks you know it's not a high chance so you have to recognize when the market when the overall market isn't in the best behavior um you 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 have to be able to be disciplined and step back and take a day off um so i didn't take any more trades today uh if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you have any questions regarding volume or anything else please leave it down below and i'll be happy to clear anything up i'm sorry about the spontaneous video uh, I've, I've had a very busy schedule the past week or so i'm working on it i'm trying to you know have a set um you know regimen down on when i'm going to release my videos i'm going to try my best to release my videos near the market close so then you all can have the whole day to uh, view it because I know last night it was very very late and some of you didn't see that video and it probably would have been very beneficial if you could see it earlier because I was talking exactly about ALRT and the price action it would have today so um, once again thank you for watching uh, one more thing too if you stuck around to the very end of this video I want you to say volume is important. Three words. Volume is important. I want to see who my dedicated students are. I have been writing down your names of everyone who has been leaving these uh, comments at the end of the video because like I've said before, I'm going to be releasing some courses in the near future and whoever is truly dedicated to learn, I'm going to give you amazing, amazing deals on this course. So yeah, like I said, if you have been sticking around to the very end, leave a comment down below saying volume is important. Um, one last thought, you guys should join my, my Facebook group. I mean, if you've stuck around this long, you probably already have, but anyone who's new, I have a Facebook group. It's called the Day Traders Club. It's a group of around 140 members now. Um, of like-minded traders who trade anything from NASDAQ to Forex to cryptocurrency to OTCs to options anything um, And we just you know, we share our thoughts on the market We uh, we talk about the plays that we took and the strategies that we've learned and our watch list as, as well So it's a very good trading resource and it's completely free. So Always find different ways and resources. You can you can um, take your trading to the next level and this group is one of them. So I'll leave the link down below. Once again, the group is called the Day Traders Club. That's it for today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.